Well, this morning we also have Seattle Mayor Ed Murray. <clears throat> Mayor. <laughs> Good morning. I want to first thank you for welcoming me to your congregation and for letting me speak uh, from the pulpit. Um, I'm a Roman Catholic, and so far in my <laughs> two decades of elective office, I have not been asked by my own church to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I want to say a word about, um, I, I have not known the origins of the award uh, until this morning. And so I would like to say a word about events uh, this, this week in Seattle. It started in the early hours of Sunday morning when two young men were murdered, and then SPU's tragedy, and then yesterday morning um, yet another young man was murdered. I think it's important that we remember that we, Seattle, and all of us will not be defined by our tragedies. We will be defined by the communities we build, by the hope we create, by the dreams we have. We will create our future. We will not let others define us, and I think it's important to remember that. So I have the privilege of uh, talking about Senator Havan, who I've known for 19 years. And I could tell you lots of stories. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, you know, on the lighter side, sometimes maybe not, Senator Haugen has for 19, 19 years tried to convince me that I am not Irish, but I am Scandinavian. <laughs> and sometimes it's been very funny, and sometimes it's a little irritating. <laughs> Seriously. So, I want to talk about Senator Haugen's entire legislative career and her role as a leader in the state. The, I recently read a biography on the city of Jerusalem, and it becomes very, very clear that leadership among the ancient Israelis, leadership from a place of faith, required that leadership always be leadership that had justice, and particularly justice for those who are most in need. I think that sense of justice pervades everything that Senator Haugen did during her, her two decades in, in the legislature. Was it more than two decades? Well, three, three decades. Okay, three decades. <laughs> uh, you know, and often the issue that I worked with Senator Haugen on most was transportation. But you know, transportation is a human service issue. Yes, transportation is an economic issue. It is about jobs. Transportation is many things other than just building roads and making those ferries uh, run on time, <coughs> actually replacing the ferries that are a century old. Uh, and in every case, Senator Haugen kept that front and center in working on issues related to transportation. We would not have the number of people employed today if Senator Haugen wasn't willing to lead the effort to pass the largest transportation package in state history. If we had not been spending the billions of dollars to reno renovate our transportation system at the height of the Great Recession, this state would have had unemployment as big or worse in the Great Depression. So Senator Haugen's work as a legislator pervades so much about what makes our community a great community. She's also been a, a tough mentor. Uh, Senator Haugen has more than once uh, made me do things I didn't want to do, but in the end, they were the right thing to do. Back in 03, when the state hadn't passed transportation coverage for a long, long time, I was in the House as transportation chair, Senator Haugen was in the Senate. I really did not want to make the deal that we were going to make with the Republicans in the Senate on transportation. But she showed me how that would benefit not just my own district, but the whole state. And I voted for it. And it was a great thing for this state. And I have to thank Senator Haugen for pushing me. She's pushed me more than once. <laughs> pushed me hard. But again, that sense of leadership, that sense of justice means you mentor others. And Senator Haugen has certainly done that. So we come to the issue of, of, uh, of marriage equality. And, um, you know, there's been a lot, of, a lot of reasons attributed to why Senator Haugen made her decision. And I guess having had an office next door to hers for years, having worked on so many difficult issues, particularly around transportation for years, 
I think I have kind of a sense of, of what it's about. Um, if Senator Haugen is a woman of faith, which she is, I think that her guiding scripture is probably Matthew chapter 25. Was I hungry? Did you feed me? Was I naked? Did you clothe me? Was I in prison? Did you visit me? But the most interesting piece of that um, scripture is, was I a stranger and did you welcome me? And I understand, I don't know any language but English really, I understand in the original language, stranger actually means something far more significant. It means other, it means very different. And when Senator Haugen supported marriage equality, she did it as a person of faith. She did it because she was welcoming other. She was welcoming the stranger. Um, and knowing her over the years, I know that at the heart of everything else, and all the people she listened to, that was it. When she came, um, the morning she came over to my office to tell me she decided to be the 25th vote, uh, my now husband Michael was there and she came in and it was um, maybe the most profound moment of, of and probably will remain the most <coughs> profound moment of my years in elective office. And we talked a little while and it was an emotional moment. And as she left, uh, as she started to leave, she said, you know, I'm doing this because of my children and my grandchildren. They are the ones who actually helped me see what I need to do. Uh, so again, a value very important to Mary Margaret Haugen, family, her family, and then her recognition that our families were not other, they were not stranger. And I'll, they're, you know, we love, if you're a politician, you're competitive, and you hate to lose. <laughs> <laughs> there are offices that the legislators will be elected to, have been elected to, will be elected to, and people will not remember who we are or what we did. But in Senator Haugen's case, she made the political sacrifice, and people in this state will never forget who Senator Haugen is, and they will never forget what she did. And that came home to me last night. I was at a wedding of, of, of friends of ours for a quarter of a century. We've been together actually for 25 years, and they're still fairly young. Um, you know, it's a little depressing, but they, <laughs> but they, they said to me after uh, the wedding at, at St. Clement's Episcopal Church, they said to me, wow, saying those vows really made a difference. They were profoundly touched as were Michael and I last August, to be able to say those vows to each other, those words, what a difference. And so when it comes to uh, having lost an election, and I didn't like the person I lost to either. <laughs> but uh, think about, think and frame that, an election versus having given a gift to families, not just this year, not last year, but for generations and generations and generations to come. Senator Haugen did something it's from the, the, the song that we heard a little earlier, Somewhere Comes Over, Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender community has been singing for years. Uh, Cinder Haugen took us to the other side of the rainbow. Wow. And because of her, as the song goes, dreams that you dream really do come true. Thank you, Senator. Oh. Thank you.